is our word of God is our so companionship which is one of the things marriage gives you you can still have it without marriage am i clear number three to propagate the race to increase multiply and fill the earth i already gave you this number four to fulfill sexual desire i told you a lot about dopamine today let me read a line from this book if husband or wife refuse to fulfill the duties of married love becoming indifferent and cold and even haughty as prideful in matters pertaining to marital rights of the other he or she is responsible in a great measure for acts of moral delinquency that may grow out of this maladjustment in their relationship in very plain language you are saying that when a spouse refuses their spouse sexual intimacy that they are responsible in a great measure for actions of unfaithfulness and immorality that come out of this maladjustment in their relationship this wrong adjustment in their relationship and it's 100 percent the truth the major reason for a lot of unfaithfulness in marriage by men is their wives directly very very common all over the world great evil has been born a lot of men i've told you the story the woman saw people in hell and as she was there she heard a woman preaching quoting the bible up and down in the pits of sure she could not understand it how and she asked the angel or whoever was escorting her and he said she was a preacher on the earth so how did she end up here how can someone be quoting the bible preaching so eloquently he went on to say because she after the husband committed adultery one time and repented she was so angry say how can i be here doing god's will preaching and you're here committing adultery I think it was the Lord that was showing uh, Captain Mary Captain Baxter his vision. And he said, he tried to speak to her heart and say, but you know, apart from him asking you to forgive, and it was just, uh, I mean, it happened. You are even a major reason for him committing the immorality. The story didn't end well. She took a gun, shot him, shot the woman and shot herself that's how she ended up where she was doing ministry in in hell the end want to ask where the man is don't ask me i suspect he went to heaven all right it's a very common thing because men most times most times have a greater libido a greater sex drive you know and it's a greater need for males the, it is very common that so women have weaponized their body that's why you have a very direct verse in the bible it's written there very plainly that the spouses should not withhold their bodies from each other the wife does not have authority over her own body but the husband likewise the husband does not have authority over his holy body but the wife it couldn't be more it is the most direct statement on earth now most people including christians disobey this they weaponize their authority but in this area god literally said the authority is taken from you and given to your spouse that's enough to scare some of you straight to kingdom eunuch status when you stand in front of god this matter will come up yes regards the only problem if you share this with unmarried people every time you share to unmarried people they are like no problem no that's that's not one of the areas there will be problems till they marry and i've told you over and over again the married people were like you once you don't keep believing you keep thinking no why would i why would i ignore my wife women have reported their husbands women women 
there are two ways that can happen with a man he's being unfaithful which is wrong you know that's why that option does not exist he wouldn't be stupid but more commonly is the women that will weaponize it they use it to control and just it's very evil none of you will do this in the name of jesus your guidance will come from scriptures to not come from public opinion to not come from all that you can't even fast anyhow i've told you if you're married can't fast non-stop that's why you bear your yoke in your your youth fast now non-stop no god now learn to travel but when you have children at the beginning you're not going anywhere men must learn self-control there's a the major reason why women have monthly periods amongst other things even when you're married and you, the man is to stay away from her. Because everybody must be self-control. It's the self-control you had before you married that will carry you into your marriage. Without self-control, you say, no, when I marry, finally, don't worry, I'll be faithful when I marry. I, I'll not commit immorality. You don't know anything. And I can't tell you anything either. All I'll tell you is that married people are committing immorality far more than you care to know. Male and female. Everybody knows about the males. So I, you might tell me stories, I'll tell you female stories. Do not believe it. Do not deceive yourself. Do not think or presume that you can get away from or with staying unfaithful. The Lord wants you to be faithful, but you must be faithful to Him first before you can be faithful to a spouse is this okay if you are not faithful to your god you don't have the power to be faithful enough to your spouse many men and women that are unfaithful to their spouse they are very ashamed of it they don't want to be but when their spouses deprive them of their bodies they push them into sin that is a terrible thing to have on your conscience that you must walk with God closely enough and deeply enough that even if they push you away, you're able to endure and live a righteous life until they repent. Is that okay? Do you hear what I said? And if you did not do that before you married, see the period before you marry was the long training period. I don't trust someone that was unfaithful every once in a while before they married. I've told you if you are an unfaithful person, you're an immoral person, you get born again. Don't marry in a hurry. Wait first. Wait, wait. Let's purge you of that thing. So you won't carry it into a marriage. I've said to fulfill sexual desire. And in the process, I've commented on preventing immorality. I think it's the same. Another reason, purpose for the home, for marriage and the home, is to provide a place for rearing and training children. This is the best place for raising children rearing and training them a family nothing on earth can produce those kind of children so that's number five number six now to provide security people that have a secure home tend to feel secure much more these are the things that give some of you self-confidence you look at others and you wonder why do they lack self-confidence like this don't be too harsh and quick to judge people that you see that are very weak if you check, many of them, their background, their family background is very distorted. It really affects people. Family backgrounds. It's not just demons that affect people. The quality of their home. Someone that grew up in a family where they were always afraid their parents would separate or their parents separated does not feel secure. A home. So you may marry a spouse that's from such a background. It makes them do funny things. You must. It helps when you know so you can help bear with them too. You also that has that challenge, you have to be healed. You have to receive the healing of Jesus and stop acting like everybody lied to you. Many people bring into their marriage, they bring into their marriage what happened to them. Stop bringing into your marriage what happened. Don't react to your spouse with what happened to your parents or your family members or your friends. If you came from an insecure home, doesn't mean your own family will be insecure. 
In fact, if there's any threat of insecurity to come from you, if anyone proposes divorce, it's you who came from such a background. The other person that did not see such a thing will likely oppose divorce with all his heart. Won't be able to understand why do you want to? Well, we are going to walk through our problems and you're going to find yourself, I'm sorry, I can't do it, I can't do it. It's usually the background which may have been spiritually influenced. Number seven, to provide a way of dividing the workload and sharing responsibilities. The Bible here in 1 Timothy 5, 13, it talks about unmarried young women who, these ones are wid widows, they lost their husbands. He said they go from house to house and they are not only idle, but gossips and busybodies, discussing things they should not mention. So I advise the younger widows to marry, have children, and manage their households, denying the adversary occasion for slander. For some have already turned aside to follow Satan. How did they follow Satan? They were slandering, doing the devil's job. What are your duties? It is not gossip and slander. Your duties are what? When you marry, it is to do what? Have children, that's a duty. And what else? Manage their household. It's a duty. It's in the scriptures. Can your husband do everything you do? Yes. Can cook? Yes. He can do everything? Yes. But when you're in the house, both of you are in that space. Carry it as your duty. Okay? What's man's duty? Man has his duties. Chapter 2, verse 8 to 15. Therefore, I want the men everywhere to do what? One, what should men do? Lifting up holy hands. Two, without anger. Or dissension. Let me explain the duty of men. Holy hands is not just doing a church meeting, it's that they are business. When you hear of hands, think of business. And it's their duty to get rid of anger and party spirit, factions. Dissension is divisions, it's doubting. Doubt that leads to breaking away. Doubts. That is what men are to do. Men tend to be full of doubt and all that. And can be angry. God wants men rather to be prayerful human beings who trust God for the work of their hands and keep it holy. Is that okay? What does he want the woman to do? To wear what kind of clothes? Respectable apparel which should be modest and with self-control. So you can wear clothes without self-control. What is it to dress with? But with good deeds, as is proper for women who profess to worship God. Women, however, will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Are you seeing some of what is expected of the couple? Is expected the duty there? And let's just look at Titus 2, verse 5. So he's talking about the younger women and they are to be managers of their households time and submissive to their own husbands so that the word of God will not be dispensed. All right, so what happens when a young woman doesn't think this is her duty? She's not self-controlled, she's not pure, she doesn't manage her house and not submissive to her husband or kind. What is, what's the result? Do you know what it means for the word of God to be discredited? People will say Christianity is not real because of that young lady, that young wife, that wife who refuses. This is how serious ignoring God's word is. It will result in God being dishonored, God's words being thrown to the ground. Self-control. You see how many times you're caught? Self-control. And then you saw pure managers of their household. They are managing their household. Let us be exceedingly, exceedingly conscious of the purpose of marriage. It's a place for duties to be handled. I don't need to read Proverbs 31 for you. Genesis 3.19 By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your bread until you return to the ground. All right, so sweating, this is what God said to Adam. If you read from the earlier verse, he said to the man. This is what will happen to you. You're going to be sweating to provide food. 
Before now, he could provide food without breaking a sweat. Now he had to sweat it out. Number eight, to provide men and women with experiences that will help them grow spiritually. First Peter 3 verse 7. Same way, treat your wives with consideration as a dedicated vessel and with honor as fellow heirs of the gracious gift of life so that your prayers will not be in. A husband is to treat the wife as a delicate vessel and with honor. Why? She's a fellow heir. She's not a second class citizen. She's a fellow heir. Also going to rule and reign with the Lord. And if you happen to treat her without consideration, what will happen to you? Your prayers will be hindered. That means God takes it personally. So you must treat her with consideration. You can't say things like she's a woman. There's no, we don't have time for, you know, women. No, don't join and have all that gist about women. Attention, men. Don't say things about women. Don't underrate them. Don't do any of that. I thought they say you should, have to, you should treat a woman like a little child. Well, I've said that before. You treat women like children. It's only half that is true. I mean, girls, you don't agree? You don't like being treated like children? Small. You don't want that at all. Which one? Should I pass the mic? So you see, the women even agree. They don't, they don't want to be treated as full adults. Didn't you just hear them agree? I said half. But seriously, women don't want to be treated. And men, I don't know. Me, I'm still trying to learn. There's a level of um, a childish play you need with uh, a wife. If you're too serious. So these are amongst the reasons why there are problems in marriage. I'm telling you. Especially with some men of God or all these serious, uh, serious men. Let me tell you in advance what will cause problems. Because you refuse to play. You cannot not play. What are you always serious, serious for? Your faith, self. That's why they say no so easily. They don't even want to pray about it. Why is your face like that? You don't smile. You're a scary sight. Baby, oh, you look like someone that if they come to play, you might bite them. You're going to have to relax your face, sir. Are you hearing me? If you think you're going to, you're going to any woman's heart. She only agree maybe because of money and small thoughts of oxytocin. Other than that, she's terrified. She's terrified that you might command her like her father. Come here. Have you made that soup? Come here. Stand here. I'm talking to you. When you look terrifying like that, she didn't do that to someone's daughter. But I hear me. Men. I said, are you hearing me? Women are answering me. Yes, sir. I said, she didn't do that to someone's daughter. Don't have a wooden face. Have you heard me? Learn to smile. Let, let the muscles soften. You're, they are not impressed as much as you think. That doom. Pastor says something funny. Doom. You enter the car. You try to say something funny. She refuses to smile. You're wondering why. You smile for my pastor. One couple of The husband drops the wife off. The wife leans over and pecks him on the lips. He wants her ever so severely. <laughs> Who knows? It might have been lipstick that I was angry about. Who knows? When you swear your lips, it looks like you're walking tripped into a bucket of red paint. Came and used and touched my face. Who knows the man? What is God? How, how will I explain? I don't know what was the reason, but. I heard that he was very angry. He warned her severely. Don't trot again. So there's something in females that can be spontaneous. And I think in some cases it's a man and the woman is the cool water. But it's more likely that the way to think about a woman sometimes is like think of a young person too. Or you want to understand something, you be you bring that your too much discipline into and the woman will just go oh. so there's something a bit uh, should i say irreverent about women you do you know what it means to be irreverent not just to but lacking in lacking 
certain kind of fear. Oh, this is a holy righteous place. This space is, requires all. I just say, woman. And the man would think that a little more fear, a little more fear. And the woman is not, seems a bit fearless. So that's part of where you have to think of her as a child. If you don't think about it at all, you, you will be angry at her a lot unnecessarily. Men, are you hearing me? You will be angry. It's that anger I'm trying to get rid of. That strong offense. I wish I was taught these things. I knew them earlier. Oh, you'll be angry. Thank God, me, I'm not even too stuck up, too tight. Some people are really, and they don't know they should, that women are not like that. They pray. Husband was sharing me the other day how oh, he was too. He's, he's very disciplined. All you know, these men, very coordinated, very organized. Then he married a woman and he broke her heart. I don't force, force my spiritual journeys on my spouse. Many men don't know that. They expect, I'm the head of this home and whatever I do is what you do. You hear me? Woman, you hear me? Oh God, you have problems. <laughs> it's not better you allow that cook and eat and cook and keep for you when you're done. <laughs> that you're over. If she doesn't want to join you, I'm not saying she should never join in anything. I'm saying if she doesn't, it might be better to leave her don't take every rule and impose on every so women can sometimes be sometimes it's the reverse sometimes the woman that is all spiritual and the man is not so you develop spiritually you develop number nine to give a model of our relationship with christ jesus to provide a model a picture yes marriages provide a picture on the earth of christ and the church thank you jesus how do you prepare for marriage? That's what I want to address next. 